Good morning, everybody. Another how is your Saturday? I'm gonna make an adjustment here real quick. It's not the adjustment I wanted to make, but whatever. What's going on, everybody? As usual, we're gonna give everybody a minute or two to jump on, and then we'll kind of jump into it here. Whew. It is hot today. Hot, hot, hot. What's going on, Jonathan? First on, man. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Ooh-wee. It is a hot day today. Got up this morning, made breakfast, made my coffee. And it is not even 11 o'clock. It already feels like 90 out here. <clears throat> Lots to talk about today. Lots to talk about today. We, uh, we get some more information about Alabama, more information about Miami. More information about Georgia. More information about Florida. Oh, man. <clears throat> and I'm going to be honest with you guys. I am not I am not going to sit out here all day today. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. There ain't going to be no hour and a half show today. This is too hot. Uh, Georgia in the middle of August ain't no joke. What's going on, Sea Dog West? You guys go ahead and hit that thumbs up for me. It helps push it around the old YouTubers. Neighbors are loading up some furniture down there. They must work for the Department of Roads because there's two guys working and 10 people watching. What's going on, Tiger Raven? How's Maryland today, sir? Bulldog Freezoid, what's up, sir? How are you today? <laughs> They're down there fighting about how to load up a bed. I'm I'm a people watcher. I love watching people. And it looks like one guy's locked his keys in his car. <laughs> they having some fun out there this morning. Woo. Oh man. Go dogs. Florida Florida's in deep trouble. Hey Brian, what's going on? Only two more weeks. The struggle is real. That ain't no joke. I actually only about got about a got about a week, man. Seventy nine. Maryland's starting to come along, man. They're trying to build a football team up there. Miami's going to beat them. But I don't doubt it at this point. <clears throat> uh, yeah, we still got a few minutes to go, guys. I'll try to give everybody five to ten minutes to jump on before we get into the content. Otherwise, I get people asking me about... um. People asking me to recap everything. Why is this thing pulling this up? I didn't say that. Man, it is hot. I got I got to fix this fan. Oh yeah, I had to adjust the old fan of Ruski. Who was that? What, what did he say there? Uh, G Tech will beat Clemson. Brian, you're on the good, good man. <laughs> Trevor Lawrence is just too good for Georgia Tech. And I'm gonna go ahead and tell you, if it happens, I'll be excited about it. But I don't see that happening. I do not see that happening, sir. Whew. All right, coming up on the five minute mark, um, I'm gonna kind of go over some of the stuff that's not as uh, 
not as big a news as, as really what I wanted to have the show about. I was going to make a Georgia defense stack. You are correct, James. Um, what do I think about Georgia's defensive line? Do they think they can make a show against Vandy, Notre Dame? What's your thoughts on that? I think Georgia defense is going to show out. I don't think there's any problem with that whatsoever. I think secondary, the best player, in my opinion, as far as breakout player, or most talented player on defense is Eric Stokes. Um, and, then, and the crazy thing is the guy's, the guy's a sophomore. He's absolutely a, a phenom. Um, he keeps playing like he played, like he's playing. What's going on, Jay? Um, he keeps playing like he plays, and uh, he'll only be here his junior year. He'll end up going pro. Um, that guy was phenomenal in uh, – in the, he, he's just been phenomenal all over. Last year he was really kind of underrated. Um, this year he made some great plays. This guy loves he finna start up a lawnmower. Yeah, buddy. Uh, thanks, Keith. Yeah, man, it was uh, it was exciting there for a little while. So uh, if you guys you saw what Keith just threw in the chat um, yesterday, or actually not yesterday, but yesterday and the night before uh, I'm gonna pull up a picture here and show you guys I uh, I don't know if you guys can see that or not but I had uh, some pretty intense swelling just hives and welts just showed up out of nowhere for no reason um, didn't get stung by anything didn't get bit by anything that I know of um, didn't change my diet, eat the same thing. Uh, <laughs> like I got popped in the mouth is what it looked like, but I had my whole arm was welted up and I uh, took some Benadryl. Uh, my arm welted up is what made me take Benadryl. And I decided I was gonna go to bed. I put some steroid cream on it. I was gonna go to bed, call it a night. Got up the next morning and my lip was way bigger than it was when I went to sleep. And I was like, hmm, this didn't go away overnight. <laughs> And it's getting worse. Um, that's the problem. And uh, I'd been awake for maybe an hour. And my throat started to get itchy. And it felt like it was starting to kind of swell a little bit. So we ran down to urgent care. They gave me a steroid shot and a bunch of antihistamines. And um, sent me, well, they, they watched me for about an hour. And then they sent me home. And... Uh, and it's been slowly going down ever since last night. My lip was still swollen. So it was, uh, it's been an exciting experience. I guess the scariest part is, is I don't know what caused it. Um, and I asked the doctor and she said she had, you know, she didn't necessarily have a clue as to why that, that, what could have, could have, could have happened. It's going on realistic. So yeah, it was, um, it was pretty scary. I mean, I, I'm already a rough looking guy. You throw something like that in the mix, man. It just makes it 10 times worse. Let's see if I can find another one. Um, yeah, I'll take some other pictures. You can't really, I, picture's not really bright enough for I'll show you the rest, but yeah, it was, my eye was swollen and all this over here was swollen. <clears throat> but yeah, it was, uh, it was interesting. <laughs> I'm glad it's, uh, it's subsiding. It's still not gone completely. I can still feel some swelling uh, in my lips and arms, and uh, but you know, much better today. Much better today. So, oh man. So uh, I was talking about Eric Stokes. Eric Stokes uh, is going to be a leader on the defense. That guy can absolutely fly around the backfield. Um, I don't know of many that's going to be able to to cover him. Good morning. Um, I don't know many that's going to be able to record uh, record him. Uh, going to be able to cover him very well in any kind of. Uh, uh, when I say cover him, I mean throw the ball to where he can't get to it. Uh, he's going to be all over the field. He's going to be a big playmaker for us. The defensive line will do its job as usual. Um, I think there's been a big increase, um, especially in the off season, with Georgia getting in the backfield. Um, the word havoc has been thrown around a couple of the interviews with some of the leaders on the, the players. And I really think that's, hopefully that's gonna be a big impact. Some of the things some of the players have said, um, Charlie Warner, not Charlie Warner, geez. Was it Charlie Warner? I'm on medication, forgive me if I'm a little bit scatterbrained. Um, come out and said that 
the you know the he's a tight end, but he said that the offense was going to be a, a little bit different than it was last year. And then one of the wide receivers come out, I think, previous to that, and said that you're going to see a, basically a whole new offense. So we don't we don't really know what's going on. But uh, the reason I bring that up is because I don't know if you guys have seen this, but there was a uh, a little clip shown of George Pickens one handed way, way over the top of somebody, one-handed catch, falls over the guy, rolls the ball up and makes the catch and gets his feet down in bounds. It was incredible. What is the truth about Richard LeCount? I guess he has gained some weight and strength and has become more, more of a vocal leader on the field. I haven't looked into that too much, so I don't really know right out of the gate, but I'll, I'll look into it. But I mean, it's really one of those things which that should be what, I mean, that really should be happening. He's been on the team long enough. He should be a big leader. Have I ever drove from Atlanta, Georgia to Baltimore, Maryland? No, sir. Um, I think the farthest north I have been on the East Coast is D.C. Uh, I, don't, I haven't been any further north on the coast than that. Uh, I'd like to go up to Boston or Maryland and check those places out. Um, but I just haven't had the opportunity. If he's put on 15 to 20 pounds, I can guarantee it was muscle mass. Um, and that will be a welcome addition to that secondary. Thanks for that information, Mr. Keith. Um, Coach is death talking big of him now from what I've digested. Yeah, I'm glad they are, but I was looking for him to do that like last year. So I don't know what's changed that he's decided. I don't know, maybe he saw that uh, that Holyfield didn't get drafted and it put him in high gear. <laughs> oh, man. Live between Baltimore and D.C. I'll be honest with you, Tiger Raven, I'm – there, there's a lot of geography I, I'm real familiar with, but that Baltimore, D.C. area, I just, I'm not familiar with that area, man. I couldn't tell you how far apart they are or any of that stuff. So anyway, um, I wanted to talk about uh, University of Miami a little bit and Tate Martell or Tate making the starting position, however you want to look at him. Uh, Tate Martell has really put himself in a bind. This guy jumped out at Ohio State and told Justin Fields, it was like, don't swing and miss twice, basically saying, and don't come here. You know, this is really going to make you look bad. This is another example of why you should never run your mouth until you have the job. And then you probably shouldn't run your mouth that much until you do something. Um, but I don't want people to be too hard on Tate Martell because it looks like Tate Martell was right about Justin Fields not starting. They just weren't right about Tate. He just wasn't right about himself starting. And technically, if you look at his tweet, he didn't say he was going to start. So, <laughs> I think he, he was definitely referring to himself, but he definitely did not get the result that he was wanting, I'm sure. So, uh, Tate Martell... Jumped out there, made a statement, and just couldn't get it in. Uh, now Tate Martell is not is, looks like is not getting the job at, at Miami. They swung around. Uh, he is definitely the starter at OSU. Yeah, he probably would be, but we'll see. Um, I, from what I can see so far, he hasn't entered the transfer portal. But somebody, uh, I think it was one of the linemen, took a picture of his name tag from his locker on the floor. And there was some saying or something went with it that was kind of vague and irrelevant. And, uh, but the newest, and brace yourself, the newest report is that one of their wide receivers went down. Ohio State, yeah. Uh, we'll see what happens at Ohio State. We don't know. Um, I thought you were talking about Oklahoma State Union. But, um, I think that one of the wide receivers at Miami is injured or entered the transfer portal. I think he entered the transfer portal. Yes, that's what it was. He entered the transfer portal. I think his name was Nigel. And now they're talking about Tate Martell is going to play a wide receiver. Wide receiver Tate Martell. That would be interesting. But no matter what happens, um, what's going on, Jermaine? Good to see you again, brother. Um, no matter what happens, 
They're still gonna beat Florida. <laughs> What's going on, Jonathan? Man, Florida ain't got enough players. I don't know if they got enough players to fill up the team bus to cover the gas in it, man. Did I watch him on QB1? No, I did not. Are you talking about Tate? Tate Martell, yeah. He, he's got all the symptoms of a classic D-bag. Oh, I want to I want to interject something about people that I thought were classic D-bags. Um, I don't know. I, I'm not a big fan of Baker Mayfield. I mean, he's, he's a talented player. But the attitude that comes along with it is not it just kind of rubs me the wrong way i mean maybe if he's on your team or whatnot it might not be too bad but i just he's just one of those guys man i just cannot tolerate now he's the kind of guy that if you walked in a room and we were at a social event i would probably walk up and shake his hand and walk on by and go into the other room i wouldn't hang around in that room because his personality would just uh just uh, just irritate me to no end. Now, that having been said, I like to give credit where credit's due. And even if I can't stand you, and you do something that I think is noteworthy, I'll point it out. Recently, at a uh, favorite dog of all time, man, what kind of question is that? Hershel. Good night. That guy, that guy is a legend, and no matter what, he was an Olympian. He's, he's, he's a brilliant guy. Um, he's very active in the community. He's, he's undefeated in the UFC. Um, he holds all kind of records of all time. I mean, you got, the, the, the guy's story is incredible. Um, if you ever get a chance, they made a, um, they made a video. Made a video. Uh, they made a show, um, and it was on ESPN one night. I think it was ESPN Now or uh, I forget what it was. But it was a show about Herschel Walker. And, and the guy's got an incredible story. If you guys get a chance, go look up that story about him. It was on ESPN. Might have been the SEC Network. But, wow, um, floored me. So much more to Herschel Walker than you guys realize. Uh, just an incredible guy. If you follow him on Twitter, you'll see all the stuff that he's involved with. He's really a man about, about helping. And it's incredible to see. Anyway, I digress. Back to uh, Baker Mayfield. Baker Mayfield was at a practice, I believe it was. And the – they were out. It was like a break between practice. SEC story. Thank you, Salty Dog. That is what it was. The uh, Baker Mayfield was out signing autographs. What's going on, Melissa? Roll Tide, girl. That's her, not me. Um, she is a Roll Tide girl. There, let me fix that. The Baker Mayfield come out with signing autographs. And there was a bunch of soldiers in line. And they were all there to get his autograph. And the team called him back to the field. He was like, hey, we got to go practice autographs over. And he just point blank said no. He goes, I'm going to stay here until I talk to every one of these soldiers, until I sign every one of their autographs. And I'll sign whatever they want. And he did. He stayed there that entire time. And he signed everybody's autographs. He took pictures with everybody. He signed whatever they wanted. And to me, that was really nice to see. Um, I, I like seeing I like seeing people that I can't stand give me a reason to like them. I, I don't I don't want to dislike you. I want to like you, but you got to give me a reason to like you. And so I was like, you know what? That's that's a very redeeming quality of that guy. It shows that he cares more about other people than about himself. And I really, for a long time, thought everything about him was the Baker Mayfield show. So I was really I was really happy to see that. Fans blowing right in my eyes, making my eyes. All right, so ugh. <clears throat> uh, I met him in person and got a picture and autograph. What did you think of him, Jonathan? Let me know. I don't know that I'd ever want his autograph. Um, that's just not something I could hang on my wall. But that's just me. Man. Open to my eye. <clears throat> so let's see. Oh, Nick Saban. So for the, those of you who don't know, Nick Saban did come out and say that Trey Sanders is going to have to have surgery on his foot. They're not saying what it is. 
typically surgeries, broken ankle, something's torn pretty bad. It, it must have been pretty rough. And he's out for an undisclosed period of time, which means rest of the season. He spiked a flag on our 50. He's a county I still can't stand. <laughs> I don't blame you for that, Colin. I don't blame you for that. But take solace in knowing that we whipped this honey. Just know that whenever you take a team to triple overtime and you beat them, they gave you everything that they uh, they gave you everything they had, and you still won. So I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it, it's pretty hot down here. It is pretty hot. This right here is one of the big reasons why. Um, Georgia needed an indoor practice facility so badly. I know there's people on here that aren't Dogs fans, but the Dogs fans, pretty much for the entire time that we had Mark Rick as a head coach, we did not have an indoor practice facility. Uh, something apparently that he had requested, but we had never gotten it. Um, then I think somehow or another the initiative got started, and I think they were looking for like $72 million. Uh, to, they wanted to come up with $72 million to build that... Uh, to build a facility and I think within within like two weeks the fans had raised like 114 million or something ridiculous like that I mean don't quote me on the exact numbers but it was a substantial um, bigger number than what they asked for and it may have been 42 million and we did 72 million something like that but it was a big big difference it's incredible uh, anyway back to Nick Saban uh, hey what's up Artie rain drizzling constantly here in Gainesville man I would enjoy a little bit of rain uh, it's it man. It is hotter than a skillet out here. Uh, and my grandma's got to do better about getting some kind of outdoor air conditioning. It's terrible here. I'm living in my grandma's basement. I will tell you that I know that Clemson and Auburn is a rivalry. I did not know that, sir. I did not know that. I will tell you though. That steroids make you itch. Got a pool. We had a kitty pool, but she she emptied it out. She won't let me get in. It's just I'm too big. Tyler Sadler says, go Aggies. I got him an autograph mainly for my son, but he's a very humble person. But if you ask him certain questions, he would tell you the truth and tell you he can prove it. Interesting. Um, but you also got to remember that <laughs> Melissa Mason is forgetting Auburn. Um you also got to understand that as a as a big time image, your actions are going to be perceived by the public in a certain way, and reporters are going to twist them, and you can only give them so much before they're going to they're really going to make you look like a bad person. Um, that spike in that flag on that fifty yard line um, that drew a lot of attention. That was unnecessary. Also, running down the running down the field like. Doing this uh, Chris Farley thing or Jim Carrey thing, I, <laughs> it does not look good. <laughs> well, so much for that cup of coffee. Uh, now it's over to the water. Whew. All right, guys. If you guys have made it this far in the video, give me a thumbs up. I appreciate it. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe share. Take a moment. Kicking around Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Um... WhatsApp, Snapchat, Flip Flap, whatever they got going on now. Uh, just put that in there and, and kick it around to your friends. You got somebody you don't like, send them the link and tell them it's something cool. Uh, and, and then irritate the fire out of them. Whatever works. Whew. Thunderstorm just arrived here in Terrapin territory. Well, send it down here, sir. We need it. So hot. So hot here. Well, how hot is it? so hot. I was walking down the street earlier. I saw a man just burst into flames. Thanks, Melissa. The wheels come off the gust bus. Oh, they're going to come off this season. There's no doubt. Yeah, he got ran out by a 50-year-old cop. I forgot about that. <laughs> they need to recruit that guy. <laughs> Get him a waiver. Get him a waiver. Let him play. A 50-year-old man out there just dump trucked him. <laughs> Keep in mind, Baker Mayfield in a pair of sweats and a t-shirt. This cop over there got on 50 pounds of battle rattle. <laughs> dump trucked him. Who's Gus? Never heard of her. There you go. Um, 
Nick, uh, back to Alabama, Nick Saban was talking about the uh, the injury report. Apparently, they got a one of their another players has got a knee injury. Um, he's going to be out for a little while. They don't know what his condition is. He may be back. Um, they got another guy who's got a, a sprained ankle, but he should be good to play by the beginning of the season. Um, typical typical banter from Nick Saban. You know, we're not doing as good as we want to do. You know, we got a lot of work to do. Some reporter asked him a ridiculous question. <clears throat> and the question was this. Um, did, did you, what, the question started out like this. Tua, when Tua has two and a, when Tua has two and a half or less seconds in the pocket, he has a 20% better completion rating than if he has more than two and a half seconds in the pocket. What do you guys think of that stat? And Nick Saban's like, where in the hell did you get this stat from? He's like, we don't even we don't even find them kind of stats. Does there somebody make this up? Where did you get that from? And I'm not even going to answer that question. It's a ridiculous question. So I thought that was pretty funny. He's like, who, who is sitting there with a stopwatch going two and a half seconds? All right, it's over. Oh, I got to write it Who does that? That's, that's, that's a little much. What's going on, Sarah? Good morning. Glad to see you on, honey. Oh, man. Is it 11 o'clock already? Whew, good night. I ain't gonna lie to y'all, it's hot out here today. It is hot out here today. What's up, Dwayne? The uh, Alabama seems to be coming along nicely. Nick Saban seems to be uh, having the team turn in the right direction. The coaches are finally getting to see some scrimmages out of these players, see who they're gonna start. So you're gonna, you're gonna start seeing more and more starters decided. <clears throat> One of those starters that, that I'm looking forward to is watching the, the Miami quarterback situation progress. Um, Tate Martell is looking to be pushed out of that uh, or, or has been pushed out of that role. I just don't see any way he's going to get back into that. Uh, let me look that up real quick. I, want, I can't remember the guy's name. Ooh, man, it's hot. <clears throat> All right, now <coughs> it doesn't matter. I'll look that up in a minute. If you guys made this far in the video, like, thumbs up, share, subscribe. Yay! Happy to have all that. Um, one of the things that I'm trying to do is to get to 1600 subscribers, and I'm really close, guys. We're at like I want to say we're like 1588 or, or something like that, and it, it's really because of you guys. It's, it's you know. When you first start out trying to get, you know, a subscriber base, actually, let me check this morning, 1590, actually. Um, so we're, we're only 10 away with a couple weeks to go. Uh, should be able to hit that number. Uh, and, and it's all thanks to you guys. You guys hitting the like button, sharing it, that sort of thing really helps too. Uh, me making videos is great as far as helping getting uh, people to come to the channel, but it's you guys that, that do the most for me. Uh, even if you're not watching this live, it, it really helps it. Jimbo's going to raise the Aggies higher again this year. S still think we are a level behind Bama and GA. He is closing the gap. Tyler, I'll talk about that in a second. And I think you're right in some aspects, and I think you're wrong in some aspects, and I'll explain what I mean in a minute. And I don't mean it in a bad way. What's up, VT Dub? Go Georgia and Florida still sucks. Florida sucks and getting worse, and we'll get into that in a second. But do me a favor, like, subscribe, share. Uh, I want to get to that 1600 mark. I think if I can get to the 1600 mark, it'll be possible to hit 2000 by the end of the season, but we'll see how it goes. Uh, it, all of this is thanks to you guys, and I really appreciate it. It's, it's, it's very humbling. I mean, it used to be I would get up in the mornings on Saturdays, and I'd be like, you know what, I'm just going to make a video for the fun of it. And now um, I, I have fun making them, but I enjoy getting out here and interacting with you guys. You guys are the best part of this, and, and I really appreciate it. Uh, let's see. Miami's going to beat the Gators by 10. I think that's possible. Um, so I was looking at some of the stats, kind of going over some of the things. Oh, my goodness. Um, Florida's in worse shape than I thought. I think they got another uh, They got another guy who is not eligible to play. It was a four-star running back or wide receiver. 
Miami. Oh, here comes Artie. Artie, Florida ain't got no team left, man. They got they got seven guys that have decommitted. They've got four guys that are not eligible. One of their offensive line guys is now injured. They on the right tackle. They're shifting the excuse me, the left tackle to right tackle. The left tackle's backup is now moved up to the starting position. Has no experience. So, um, as goodness, as bad as the offensive line is, it just got worse. Team. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Ever since I started taking a steroid, every time I eat, I get these crazy hiccups. I was hoping it wouldn't happen this morning, but they're here, so here we go. So, teams are going to bulldoze. That <laughs> funny argument. Teams are going to bulldoze over Florida. There is. They're not going to stop anybody from creating so much disruption that Felipe Franks is not going to be able to uh, to have time to throw. Felipe Franks has already proven that when he's under pressure, he becomes a terrible quarterback. So much to the point that his own fans have booed him off the um, and not coffee, water, sir, water, water and coffee. Um, their own fans have booed him off the stage. I mean, they they off the field. And whenever you score a touchdown and you have to run up in your own stadium and go, shh, that's a problem. That's a problem. Um, he's it's just not – they keep losing players, man. They, You know, if you'd, have started, if you'd have started the season with all the players that you recruited and all the guys that hit the transfer portal, and somehow find a way to coach up that horrible offensive line, I'd say, you know what, maybe you're right. But the more I look at Florida, the worse it gets. And I mean the worse it gets. So, let me uh, let me pull this up. Now they got those two, two more starters dealing with injuries. You got <clears throat> I mean if you guys go look at Bleacher Report, you look at 24-7 Sports, the Orlando Sentinel, I mean all of these places. If you look at I had all this stuff pulled up earlier. <sighs> yeah. Now they're calling Florida transfer portal U. I think I lost you guys. You guys still there? A lot of wishful. He says a lot of wishful thinking against Florida. Okay, so here's what we got. I'm just going to go through the nine uh, five-star freshman transfers. The only five-star that, that I believe y'all have right now is Brenton Cox, and that's the guy who wasn't good enough to play for Georgia. I mean, Chris Steele. I mean, it. Florida players leaving. I mean, it just. So let's do this. I'm going to go to Florida Gators. Decommits. This is the this is the 2020. This is the 2020 recruiting class. Uh, Kendrick Bingley Jones, four star, decommitted. Uh, Key Yvonne Lee, four-star, decommitted. Anthony Richardson, four-star, decommitted. Joel Williams, four-star, decommitted. J.M. Bell, three-star, decommitted. Morvin Joseph, three-star, decommitted. Josh Griffiths, four-star, three-star, decommitted. 
Um, and then Chris still trying. I mean, dude, there's there's tons and tons of players that are leaving this team. And then you add in injuries? No, sir. The team wasn't that good to start with. So you throw in a rash of losing 10 to 12 quality players was probably all of the quality players you had. Florida was not that deep. They hadn't recruited that great to be able to just reload. I mean, think about this. Georgia has had an average of a number two recruiting class for the past several years. You heard that Cox got kicked off the team because he took a swing at a coach? I don't doubt it. I do not doubt it. Oh, UGA is not going to say that officially. But, I mean, those kids in the locker room, they'll talk. Those kids in the locker room will definitely talk. But think about this. If if Georgia, and as much as I know about Georgia, I can tell you right now, if we lost, if we had seven B commits and then probably another five to ten guys that are either injured or left the team, we wouldn't be able to recover from that and say that, you're, that we're going to beat Alabama. There, there's no way. There's no way. It takes recruit, yes, and Vernon is absolutely right. It takes years to recruit and reload, and Florida doesn't have it. He said it, he said that he was a cancer on the team, and that's exactly right. There was a lot of players that, that said they were glad to, glad to see Brenton Cox go and that, they, that if he's going to go to Florida, that it's good because he's a cancer in the locker room. Kid had a bad attitude. He, I mean, and Georgia's getting to the point where it can, Georgia has gotten to the point where it can recruit players that have a good attitude, that want to be there for the right reasons, and we don't have to just take what we can get. During the Mark Rick era, and probably the first couple of cycles, you know, the first cycle, cycle and a half of Kirby, we had to kind of take what we could get. And now we're in a position where we can pick and choose. The reason I say that is because if you look at Y'all over there ticking off his fans, man. <laughs> uh, I just thought he was too slow to play outside linebacker. He is. Brett, none of those guys were starters or even going to get any playing time this year. Artie, that's not true. Two of the guys that are injured were starting on your offensive line, sir. Two of them. And you can't tell me that losing three or four four-stars is beneficial to your team. The five-star wide receiver that transferred, Chris Steele, you can't tell me that that guy wasn't a starter? Come on now. I like you, but you're pressing, you're, you're pressing credulity, cred, credibility. <laughs> did you know that Clemson football hasn't played in Florida Gators since 1986? No, I did not. Or 1961. No, I did not. Holy cow. Holy. Kirby was really cleaned up y'all's program. I will always have respect for that man. So if Chris still wasn't going to start, if Chris still wasn't going to start at that position, who was? Artie, right, did you say something? I missed it. Channel. It just says channel. He wasn't going to start over Marco Wilson, Day, Dean, and CJ Henderson. No way. Uh, I don't know, sir. Well, a answer me this, sir. What is going to happen? What's going to happen with the five Florida Gators that have been accused against violence, on uh, violence against women under Dan Mullen? Five old. 19-year-old student accused Huggins of choking her during a tutoring session, according to the police reports. The woman had previously the woman had previously been made uncomfortable because Huggins pulled her hair in an earlier tutoring session, according to the report. So what's gonna happen with all those guys? Yeah, still was desperately needed. What's going on, Zimmer? I 
probably missed some guys in the chat here. I apologize. Uh, Danny, got you. Sarah, I talked about you earlier. Sam King, what's up, buddy? Um, what happens if Harbaugh doesn't win in Michigan again this year? Who else are they going to get? I don't think they have anybody else they can get. I think they're still what they got. Well, the fact is, Artie will never know because he saw that uh, that program is in shambles and he left. That program is in shambles. It is. You can't sit here and say you got five guys that might go to jail. You've had seven decommits. You've had nine, at least nine transfers. Um, that you can't make me believe that program is even in the middle state to take on a team like Georgia. No way, sir. One more week, go dogs. One more week, no will be football on TV. Why so much time on Florida? They are not a threat to you. The reason I'm talking about Florida is is because I hate Florida. <laughs> I hate them. Oh, my goodness. That's a damn mess. It is a damn mess. You are right, Vernon. Um, if you're going to... And here's the crazy thing. The, the, all these players were already there, and Dan Mullen came in and screwed it up. I, if that, if Dan Mullen doesn't have an 8-5 season, I would, I would suspect they would fire him because he's done a terrible job of managing that team. <coughs> You don't see other you don't see other elite coaches having those kind of problems. You have normal problems. A player or two gets uh, caught with weed, or uh, a player gets caught with bird poop on the on the dash. <laughs> Already, I don't think so. I think the team they had last year was better than the team they have this year, and they didn't even come close to beating Georgia last year. So, there's that. Um, talking about Georgia. I think the running back situation is strong. The offensive line is strong. The defensive line is strong. Uh, looks like Richard LeCount stepping up at the the linebacker position. Monte Rice is stepping up at the linebacker position, strengthening up the middle of that field. So people aren't going to be able to run up the gut as easily as they were last year. I think our secondary is definitely doing all the things it needs to do. Uh, the quarterback situation is not being contested. He's, yeah, he's, he's absolutely wrecked that roster. I don't know what he's doing out there. I'd be surprised if they keep him. I really would. If he doesn't go at least eight and five this year, and if he doesn't play Georgia close, they're going to look at him and go, "Hell, Dan, uh, Dan. I mean, McElwain was doing better than you, buddy. We fired him, so you got to go." It was close. They spotted you ten points, and was beating you fourteen to thirteen in the third quarter. Well, I wish that I wish we could. I wish we could say that that we can go by third quarter scores because if that's the case, Georgia would have a national championship. Apparently, yeah. Apparently, UGA's defense was incredible during the scrimmage. Uh, Kirby Smart, being a defensive-minded coach, he's really looking for his defense to step up. I I'm glad that he's recognized that we need to fill the roles in the wide receiver, <coughs> wide receiver positions. Uh, and I think the wide receiver position, even though with the loss of uh, T.J. Holloman or Simmons, uh, is uh, is going to be well improved. Jonathan Cain's to Jonathan Cain's Florida. Yep. Uh, you have to recruit your own state, keep the talent. None of that floor, none of the Florida teams are doing that. To be fair, though, Colin, um, all the major teams recruit in Florida, all of them. And there's a ton of talent in Florida. There's tons of money in Florida. There's tons of nice facilities in Florida. And those kids get coached up real well. Um, the... You've got every football team in the country recruits in at least three places. Georgia, Florida, and California. And Georgia traditionally has not done a great job of pulling talent out of California, but they are getting better at it. Um, yeah, Dwayne already, already thinks Florida is going to beat Georgia. Texas, of course, yeah. You're right, Colleen. Everybody recruits out of Texas, but Texas is like... Pfft half of a country by itself, isn't it? It's like almost a no-brainer. He thinks he thinks he'll beat Georgia and lose to LSU. Artie is the only person in the country. <laughs> Artie is the only person I know of in the country that thinks that, that Florida is going is gonna run the table on Georgia. 
I'm trying to figure out where, I, and here's the thing, Artie has made me go look up so much information. Like I'm trying to find a, a wrinkle or a fold or a standout athlete that's going to be so dynamic he's going to completely change the offense to the point that Georgia can't handle it. But I just don't see it. I think George, I think the only thing that may even potentially be an opportunity for Florida to beat Georgia would be in the passing game. <clears throat> and after watching Eric Stokes play, I just don't believe that's going to happen. J Jacob Copeland, I'll look him up, sir. No way Florida will beat Georgia. I think the Emory Jones, uh, I think if we put Emory Jones in and started before the game, it will be close. Hey, buddy, what's up? Um, I actually think they're still in bed, buddy. But I'll, let, I'll tell them whenever they wake up to come over and see you. I will tell them. All right, have a good day. <laughs> Neighbor kid. I want to play with our kids. Uh, yeah, I, I think I think Florida had a better team last year than they have this year. I don't think Felipe Franks has, has progressed enough to to be uh, to be uh, a threat to Georgia in the secondary. He's not a he's not a mobile quarterback. He's not going to win the game with his feet. Um, it just just is what it is, man. <clears throat> I mean, there's there's no there's no betting line in the country that even shows that uh, he's why he says he's gonna watch the game with me. Um, let's be real, Southern boys. You know how to you, let's be real, Southern boys know how to play football. We do. Time to hit this swimming pool, Melissa. Y'all have a good day. Have a, you have a good have a good time in the pool, Melissa. Lance from Jasper. I don't. I, I've never talked to Lance from Jasper, so I don't know, man. I've heard that George Pickens would be better than AJ Green. That's what they say, but that's one of the things you got to prove on the field. I already share that Kool Aid you've been drinking. Uh, uh it's Flavor Aid, man. I've been drinking the Flavor Aid. How do I feel about the Georgia Notre Dame game? I started out a little bit nervous about that game because of how close they played us last time. I think the quarterback they have now is, is a different and, and better quarterback than they had before. However, I will say Georgia has done a very, very good job of containing and shutting down this type and style of quarterback before. The only quarterbacks we have ever seemed to really struggle with is a backup quarterback. <laughs> That's the only that's the only quarterback we struggle with. In my in my personal opinion, Baker Mayfield did a did the best job as a dual threat quarterback against Georgia than any other quarterback I had seen. Um, the first time we played Tua, we beat him. Uh, excuse me, when we played when it was Jalen, we shut Jalen down, and then he put Tua in, and, and Tua just had a different dynamic that I guess we weren't prepared for, and then vice versa the year after. So yeah. My mouth ain't moving with my words. It's probably just lagging a little bit. Sorry. Uh, I'm running off the neighbor's Wi-Fi, um, and he's he's linking his to the McDonald's Wi-Fi up the road. So, you know, uh, Grandma won't get high-speed Internet, so I got to do what I got to do. <coughs> got disconnected earlier. I had to go over there and rattle a can and then fixed it, so we're good. I think UG, uh, as far as UGA beating Notre Dame, uh, I think you know, I think UGA will beat them, but I don't think it'll be a 40 to 14 score. I think it'll probably be somewhere around like 35, 24. I think it'll be a, a double digit win, but I think it'll be a little closer. I, th I think that Texas A&M game is a dangerous game. I think if we're not prepared for that, I think that can punch us in the mouth. Uh, I have some friends that are Georgia Bulldog fans here in Terrapin Territory that go to Salisbury University. Huh. Dog Nation all over, man. Ugh. Well, we got about 10 minutes to go, guys. I'm not going to sit out here all day. It's, it's bloody hot. It just is. Mac Jones is talented, yep. Their starting 22 is not that much better than Florida starting 22. You have a new offensive coordinator and inexperienced receivers. Um, 
I think we proved last year we don't really need experienced receivers. Our top receiver um, really wasn't a standout guy. And uh, apparently you've never heard of Lawrence Cager. Um, this guy averaged 17 yards per catch. Uh, the guy is incredible. Go look him up. Um, <clears throat> George Pickens, uh, even though he may not be extremely uh, experienced, uh, go watch some tape on him, sir. I think you will find that he is absolutely incredible. Uh, whatever works, man. Auburn at on the plane scares me. It doesn't scare me. Um, did you hear the Vanderbilt running back Keyshawn Vaughn said about Georgia? No, I did not, Nicholas. And I'm sorry if I missed you earlier in the channel, buddy. New DBs coach. All you have on the line. All you have on have is O line and Swift and Fromm. Already, that right there tells me you don't know enough about Georgia. You need to dig a little deeper, sir. The uh, it, honestly, most players only need uh, one good player to beat Florida. Yeah, Georgia would beat Florida. Yeah, George Pickens is a beast. Uh, here's here's what Georgia needs to do to beat Florida. I formation. Power eye formation, offset eye, uh, run it up the gut, run around the end, run it up the gut, run around the end. That's it. That's all Georgia's got to do. There's nobody on that defensive line that's going to be able to hang with the depth at Georgia while they, and let's just say that they keep it close in the first half. Let's just say they keep it close in the first half. By the time you get to that 45 minute mark of that game, that lack of depth chart that Florida has is going to be ground to dust. And Georgia's just going to keep stacking heavy bodies in there that are fresh. And I don't care who you are. What's up, Fred? Farid? Farid? Not sure how to say your name, sir. But I guess it's Farid. Sorry if I got it wrong, sir. Welcome to the channel. Georgia is deep and curious, especially on both sides of the ball, line of scrimmage, and no team in the SEC has a chance. Vernon is speaking the truth. Power formation didn't work. Uh, remember last year getting stuffed five times in a row? Yeah, I do, Sam, but what was the score of that game? I can't remember the score. Azerbaijan. Did I say that right, sir? Uh, he said that Vanderbilt was going to run up the score on Georgia. He's smoking crack. Have that man drug tested immediately. I have a friend of mine. Um, from Azerbaijan. Samender, how you doing, sir? Uh, I don't know who they are. I don't know who they are. They choke. I do know who they are. They choke. Who are you talking about, Artie? How did we choke against y'all last year? What was that score again? What was that score? Thanos. Okay. Uh, still stuff that old line that's supposed to be the most dominant line country. Hey, man, everybody comes up with a good play every now and then. I mean, that's a good set of downs for them. Not taking it away from them. Vandy may not even score. That's a possibility. Matt Landers, D. Rob, Cager, Stevenson's are all starters week one. Bet on it. <clears throat> I'm talking to the. Oh, okay. I got you. What's going on, Stacy? Welcome to the channel. Welcome back to the channel. How do you, you want to say it? Show show you around, please. Um, that is that around? Is that round? Hey, there you go. That's around. Everybody, welcome to welcome free to the channel. I guess I've never seen him in here before. Do me a favor, guys. We got like forty people in here. Thumbs up. Are you going to be in the post UGA? <laughs> I hope so. I'm sure he will. Already, already's a pretty stand up guy. I think Georgia would go 12 and 0, but they play three good teams coming off a of bye. You never know. Oh yeah, Ari will be here. If you don't, I'll raise him forever. From Syria, there you are, sir. Welcome to the channel. I think you may be, uh, maybe the first or second person from overseas on this channel. Glad to have you. Going to be interesting to see Ohio State versus Georgia in the playoff. That's an interesting comment, sir. What's going on, Kevin? What's going on, Sarah? Thanks for the thumbs up, guys. You can't assume anything. Nothing is 
Definite. You mean kind of like how Kentucky beat y'all last year? Kevin Gaines from Athens. Sir, I'm parking in your front yard. Aggies all the way. <clears throat> I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. In, uh, in about a week or so, we're going to see the uh, Miami versus Florida game. I think Miami has an opportunity to win that game. Um, I think they've got their quarterback situation straightened out, which is good. Am I American? Yes, sir. About, about as American as you can get. Brazelton, Georgia. Brazelton, Brazelton, Brazelton. Yeah, I know where Brazelton is. That's up there by, uh, isn't that close to the Houston or Houston or Houston or something like that? There you go, Kevin. I might bring Mr. Keith Carr with me when I do that. Last Saturday with no cost football, also heard Take My Tail was considering a move to a slot receiver. Yeah, they got a guy who entered the transfer portal, um, Nigel somebody, and I think he's looking at taking up that position. So up, Smoking Bulldog? I think our tight ends are going to show up against Vandy. <clears throat> What's going on, Israel? Florida's going to beat Miami bad. Hey, Dwayne, you live close to Houston? I didn't know that. What's up, Danny? In which city in the city do I live? I live south of Atlanta, sir. Fried, no better place to learn English than from southern folks. <laughs> Sorry, your English is, is some bad. That's all right, buddy. Do you think we'll – who do I think will be the starters week one? At what position, Darius? Because I can't go through an 85-man roster. Um, that would suck to lose to Justin Fields. I don't think Justin Fields is going to start. I think Justin Fields has showed that coach in uh, practice the same thing he showed our coach in practice. Uh, that house is actually empty. Nobody lives there. But, yeah, it's a nice house. Just don't sleep on Keyshawn Vaughn, best running back Vanny has ever had. Um, what was that guy's name? Benny Snell, best quarter, one of the best running backs Florida had ever had. Got worked by Georgia. Georgia's really uh, – do I think Martell will take any snaps against Florida? No, I don't think so, not unless an injury occurs. I think take Martell um, – I think he's made his bed. Now he's kind of got to lay in. I don't think it's too late to transfer anywhere to actually have an opportunity to take over a team. Uh, he probably just needs to stay where he's at. I dream to come to America. I hope we'll come to America one day. But good luck, man. They, they take people up. They, they take applications every day. You gotta reach out to the reach out to, to whomever is part of that process, man. According to the rest of the USA, our English is bad too. Welcome to the fan. <laughs> yeah, Roquan is, is a beast. Look for another big year from Ty Gurley, Sonny Michelle, Nick Chubb. Um, all those guys are showing out. And believe it or not, uh, Vander Holyfield is actually looking really good for the Panthers. So uh, it's a good chance he might uh it's a good chance he might get uh he might get signed, if not already. I haven't looked into that too much. I, I really want to know what's going to happen with that uh, those five guys involved in that. Uh, that assault. Holyfield is third strong behind McCaffrey and Scarlett. Yep. I mean, I think that he's definitely – I think Holyfield can definitely be a running back that can work his way into a into a position. Samender, I have no idea what you said, sir. Uh, perfect offense for him. Yep. Well, next week, uh, this time, the, the Florida game will be on uh, with Miami. They'll probably lose. Um, hang on a second, guys. I 
or I had to make some adjustments. Steaks on the grill today with fried potatoes, mushrooms, and banana peppers. You know, for a second there, that really messed me up because it said bananas, and in my mind, I said bananas, comma, peppers. I was like, that's nasty. <laughs> and I was like, ah, banana peppers. Got it. Elk Ridge, Terrapin uh, territory here. Go Tigers. Just getting home from practice. What was you doing, kid, kid? Softball, baseball, football? Hey, big dog, your wife is, has you outside again. Well, we have a we have a little one. Um, we have a, we have two older ones, which they're still, they sleep in on the weekends. We let them sleep in. Um, I grew up in a house where um, you got woke up at like 9 o'clock every Saturday to a vacuum cleaner. So you never got to sleep in. So I, I, I take pity on my kids. I let them sleep in. Yeah, Miko Hartman is blazing fast. We need to plan a meet and greet. That would be interesting. Oh boy, I'm trying. I don't know if I should do that, sir. I'm trying to get more subscribers, not less. <laughs> Football having an eight-year-old and a twelve-year-old. Man, I'm glad y'all got y'all's practice out of the way because it's gonna be hot later on. I'll be uh, Artie is an Auburn fan, but for some reason he's high on Florida. You need to check out Zach Smith Podcast, Minister Society. Good listen. I'll look into it. I'll just wake up around noon. Can I get a happy birthday, Vic, but the Gators will lose and you will owe Drew $100. <laughs> oh, I'm game for the meet and greet. If I ever do anything like that, it'll probably be at a game. You know, I'll go to one of the games and uh, meet you guys there and we'll all kick out or grill out or whatever. Yeah, just talk football. Yeah, that, that would be good. Uh, one of the things that I want to did somebody did somebody do a super chat and I miss it? Maybe do a joining YouTube video. Uh, maybe that might be fun. Who gave me a super chat? Does anybody know? I, I think it was during that part where it was breaking up. Um. I'm not real familiar with how to do a super chat. I mean, I'm kind of new to the whole thing myself, but there should be a a, a bar here. Did my allergies go away? No, <clears throat> I still have allergies. The dog father says Tate now says he's going to try to be wide receiver. Yeah, we'll, we'll see what he does over there. Um, I think he's just trying to stick around this year. He'll probably transfer again after next year. He's trying to show he's got some talent, but. Yeah, Vernon. It probably was Vernon. He he does that every time we're on, man. He's a really good guy. I appreciate him doing it, too. Um, a tailgate party would be fun. Alabama fans hanging out at UGA tailgate. Hey. It looks like there's quite a few people around here that's kind of close to Athens, and I plan on going to a game this year. Um, I think every – I think me and Keith have been to what? Have we been to two or three G-Day games, Keith? I think it's two. And thanks, Salty Dog. Thanks, Vernon, for a super chat. If you're still in the channel, buddy, I really appreciate it. I don't know what you said. I think it happened during that point when it was disconnecting and reconnecting. And I just looked at him and saw it at the top. I didn't tell me who gave me a super chat. I just said there was one. I've never been geared up for a Florida game like this unless it's against Georgia. Yeah, Florida's going to get work. So me and Keith went to the last two. And before that, I missed the year. Uh, the year before that, me and my wife went. And man, it was a it was a heck of a heck of a time. I love going to those games, man. It's a blast. See you, big dog. Still hate Georgia fans, but still watch your videos. <laughs> Thanks, Sam. <laughs> Appreciate you joining, joining the channel, man. LSU versus Texas. You got LSU, man. Is there money sign? There is a money sign beside the chat box for a super chat. James has got it. <laughs> Somebody was asking something about Van Pran. What was the what was the question? I missed the question about Van Pran. Any word on Van Pran? No, there's no word on him right now. But I mean, I I, I think me and everybody else in the world expects that guy to commit to Georgia. Um, he's number three. Uh, 
basically number three at position in, in the country. The guy's incredible. Do I think this year LSU beats Texas? Yes, I think it's an opportunity for LSU to beat Texas. Um, but uh, I don't know if LSU will beat Alabama. I think that this is a year that Coach O is trying to evolve his um, his play style. And we'll kind of see where that goes. If he's able to evolve his play style effectively, it gives him a better chance. But right now, the way he plays football, Alabama's – I mean, Nick Saban's got his number. Saban – Lewis, excuse me, Lou, Nicholas Lou Saban Jr. has his number. Went through asking during 4th July weekend, that renovation, the new jumbo screen is awesome. Yes, and they're, I think they're finishing up this week um, the stadium lighting. So you guys may see different lighting um, on the stadium. I don't know why you're, I don't know why I'm having a connection issue today. Yeah, the the screen that screen is big. It's 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 an awesome screen too. Uh, we went at G Day. They had everything up and operational and running. It was really nice. We really had a good time. It was raining and we grilled out, and uh, it stopped raining and it was just pleasant. I just had a really good time. I'm gonna go back next year too. I'm gonna try to go to a game this year. We'll see which ones. For those of you who don't know. The tickets to their Notre Dame game are absolutely out of the freaking world expensive. Um, if you guys, if you guys find some Notre Dame tickets and you don't need them, uh, just let me know. I'll uh, I'll put them to good use. That McDonald that McDonald's Wi-Fi, that's what it is, man. It's not even a McDonald's Wi-Fi. It's the McDonald's Wi-Fi that my neighbor's stealing that I'm stealing from my neighbor. So that's the problem. So do me a favor real quick, guys. We got like 30 or 40 people in the stream here. Hit that thumbs up. Only takes a moment. It's tax deductible. Doesn't cost you anything. Uh, you know, you put it on your H&R block form. Charitable donations. We appreciate it. <laughs> I could not get the entire screen in a picture without going about a third of the field away. Yeah, it's huge. And think about that as an intimidation factor, too. To get, you know, teams that haven't played in a stadium like that before. And they're facing that field going down in that big stadium and just roaring and that giant signs at them and all they got is that little high school stuff that they practice on. Yeah, it's expensive, man. That game's expensive. Expensive, expensive. It's the it's the number two most expensive ticket on StubHub right now. Only I've heard more than that. Um I, I've heard thirty two hundred dollars for some for some tickets. It's crazy. But I have seen tickets for four hundred, so I don't know. Maybe Cox will punch down. <laughs> oh, that's cold-blooded. Do you think Jalen Hurts will have him? No. Uh, I will bring my son for protection. 6'5", 275, and third-degree black belt. You might need it. That's a big boy. Pinesaw, what's up, buddy? Somebody's going to get punched in the mouth, and it's not going to be Dan Mullen, I can tell you that. Oh, already, 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 already. I know a third degree black belt. I don't. I don't know any third degree black belts. You know what I know? I know. Uh, I I know L I A. I see a bad situ situation come up. I just L I A. I leave it alone. I get out of there. Bama change their lighting to LED as well. Uh, looks like I'll be able to make the stadium red. Oh. Crimson. That's pretty cool. What's up, my man? What's going on, Pinesaw? Jake Frome. Artie, you're one of my favorite people, man, because you don't mind. I can hand it to you, and you'll hand it back. <laughs> Kid kids, like, I have a black leather belt. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm just trying to make sure I covered everything I wanted to talk about today. Hurts has improved, but he won't win the Heisman. Hertz is going to look really good in that conference. Here's the thing. Hertz is going to look really good in that conference. Um, is he going to look as good as he did at Alabama? He'll probably look better. But is it enough to win a Heisman? you got to consider who he's contending against, and he's contending really against Trevor Lawrence. 
tell you the Zini Crow scrimmage is about to be crazy with secondary. Yep. Whew. Do I think do do you think if UJ went 12 and 0 and lost to Bama in the SEC championship by less than 10, they would get in the playoff? Yes. Um, even with last year with the loss to LSU, um, if we hadn't lost that game, we still would have got we'd got in there too. I know karate I'm six six two forty. Yeah, I I just know how to not let something escalate to that level. First degree level three. You know, anytime, anytime something like that starts to go down, it takes two people to fight, it takes two people to argue. You know, somebody can sucker punch you, but not not even many black belts. You get sucker punched, there's not a whole lot you can do about it. You just you don't see it coming. <clears throat> well, guys, we're getting really close to that 13, uh, excuse me, that 1600 mark. Uh, you guys have been awesome about it. I really appreciate it. Um, we've only got about a week and a half to go, so. If we can get nine more subscribers, man, that'd be great. I'm going to try and do uh, one more, maybe two more videos before the season starts. I'll definitely do a game breakdown for the Miami-Florida game. Like I do my, my normal videos with the new backdrops. I'm going to do a video with those guys. Kind of go stat for stat, tit for tit, tat for tat. So, um, kind of get everything worked out. <clears throat> I'm going to go inside, man. It's hot. I'm losing my voice. Science is stopping up. I'm starting to swell up again. It's great. I'm ready for football. Whew, 14 days left. We got seven days left before college football starts, and then 14 days before um, the dogs play. Does anyone have YouTube TV? If so, how is it? I don't. I have PlayStation View. Don't have to have a PlayStation to get PlayStation View. You can get it on uh, any smart device, uh, app, uh, iPads, uh, Kindles, your phone. Uh, and it's way cheaper. It's way, way cheaper than Dish, DirecTV, cable internet. I mean, uh, cable television from whomever you have your cable internet service through. And I have a ton of channels without all the garbage channels that they cram down your throat. So, you know, like that one channel, it's like local information about potholes that nobody watches. It's just a channel you have to skip over. And then 15 channels of the QVC network that nobody watches that crap. Um, C-SPAN. Uh, no. I got every sports channel they make. Big 10 network. Uh, I got SEC network, Big 12 network, ACC network, Longhorn network, ESPN, ESPN2, ESPNU, ESPN Plus, uh, ESPN8, the Ocho. Uh, I got all that stuff. And that's, that's the middle package with view costs like I want to say like 55 bucks a month. You ain't going to find a cheaper price. Ain't going to find one. Mm. All right, guys. Uh, thanks so much for tuning in. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe. Some of these, that'd be great. Uh, leave me a comment down in the comment section of who you think is going to win the Georgia, excuse me, who you think is going to win the Florida Miami game and the scores. And uh, we'll talk about that in some of the next videos. So. Thanks, you guys, so much for tuning in. You guys have a great day. If I can figure out how to shut this thing off. PlayStation View. V-U-E. PlayStation View. Have a good one, guys. Thanks again. Have a great day. God bless. Go dogs.